it's a luxury to go to to a meeting. It's a luxury to keep up with what's going on on. In, yeah, the know, time, the time up, alone to yeah, have the time. Yeah, I to mean, go most and, of it isn't even written in layman's terms. It's in legalese. It's in codified ordinance language. It's, in, you know. <laughs> Social hey. media is Julian Khan. Hey, that's um, <clears throat> that's K H A N, not K A H N. Mm. Um, and uh, man, top five. Top five, sir. Uh, let's do sneakers, man, because sneakers was always like that's my thing up. as a kid. I'm a '90s baby, yeah. so uh, I'm gonna say, man, my five gotta be one. In no particular, it gotta be particular order. No, nope. no. Yeah, right, just top five. All right, that makes it a lot easier. Let's just go uh, 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 Air Max 95. Okay. Um, Solid stars. Solid um, stars. The, uh, and basically, the rest is all like Tinker Hatfield, the Jordan okay. 3, Jordan 4, Jordan 5. Shout out to Yeah. And. Uh, Six too. Yeah. I love yeah, I love the black. Yeah. The infrared is probably yeah. one of my top. Okay. Yeah, cement for the for the uh, for the ones. You, I mean, you really yeah. like the first sets of the Jordans. It's I mean it's, it's, it's it doesn't yeah. it's, it's not Take just the aesthetics, but it was it's it's experience. You know okay. what I'm saying? It's like I grew up on a street of just all boys. Uh-huh. And I was usually the one that couldn't get to Jays. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I remember one time, I feel like it might have been like 89 or something like that. They had to, it was the military force. They had just came out in the summertime or something like that. It was some four that came out, but it was one of them once. And whatever it was, everybody bounced back. Midday and they all had them, so I was mm, on the porch. Same day. I know those. Oh everybody I know those had moments, bro. And everybody they planned it too. I, ain't, I know oh. those moments, man. And it was everybody was yeah. only children. It was a really unique situation, but yeah. they got what they wanted when they wanted it. I mean, these parents showed out for these babies, and mm-hmm. you know, not to say that my mother ever short but it was but, just but in the moments, the moments, yeah. man. Mm-hmm. That's why them shoes is like always a kind of high regard for me. It's just that experience and not having them as a kid or whatnot. So mm-hmm. that's half. of of it and then just watching Jordan in his prime like that's 89 90 Jordan I mean he was going up against the Pistons and getting shut down then I mean you got to think of you was rooting for him man you know and all he could do is buy the shoes yeah that was it I'm, I'm man. Gonna get the shoes man yeah, oh, I'll be man. just like I want to be like Mike yeah I will be I want yeah. be like Mike yeah I was a little little dude okay. but Okay. Was, I, I can I can uh, feel that because uh, for me it's on the second half that's why I like the um the 11s to the uh the thirteens really some yeah I can I kind of yeah. like some of the fourteens but not all like of them 13s. Yeah. but yeah bro thirteens uh that was my ones there's a lot of connection in the uh in the culture to shoes and even to what my mom used to say it was like a girl gonna gonna look, look at your shoes first I think that <laughs> that that comment alone has probably affected. So many young boys out there, and it, it, it's and it's true, mm-hmm. and and that all right. With, I don't say a lot of people aren't stylish, but it's easy to be like, okay, those are cool shoes. I'm gonna go buy the cool shoes. Yeah. Like, all right, at least I I'm steady on the cool shoes. This because because yeah. everybody can't dress, everybody can't put a fit together. Mm-hmm. But if, if we're saying all right, the new Jordans should come out Tuesday. Everybody go get those. But that's also saying that the person care about their shoes too. Cause you know, coming up, if you ain't really 
get the nice shoes and get that uh get that built into you like hey no you want to take care of these yeah. these gonna one day make you a couple dollars oh, like, <laughs> like yeah. oh, no you well, ain't well, gonna no, about, like yeah you're keeping them <laughs> as keeping a kid them? you gonna chalk these yeah. <laughs> first yeah, time yeah i probably should have yeah. kept the 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 size nines i had in my jordans when i was young and i couldn't fit them anymore mm-hmm. probably should have kept them because it was like, oh these will be everybody is that's the the sample size uh Size for a lot of people. Yeah, those those ninety Js would have worn. No matter what condition, you can still make a couple of dollars off of them. Exactly. Mm. That's all yeah. that we know, well, man. Julian, welcome to the show, sir. Welcome to the show. Hey. It's it's yeah. great to um have you on. Uh, uh, Julian is big into the community, big into the the yeah. the, the, the the work of. Uh, of the people, <laughs> and you have a food truck. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you got a food truck? Yeah, yeah, food all of What's up? yeah I got um, a food Can you truck. tell us a little bit of your background so they can get to know you a little bit, man? Man, I'm from, I'm from Buckeye, right? Mm. Um, that's where I grew up at. Uh, that's where I spent my entire life at. Um, one of uh, a, a, a good number of hats in that neighborhood. Always kind of been uh, like on the entrepreneurial, aspirational side, mm-hmm. you know. Um, we used to have a uh lady shoe store that we opened up there in the plaza um shoe time i was there for six years and um then it just kind of carried on it was a corporate corporately owned store but that was kind of my first uh like me sticking my toe into the business into side the of business but yeah i mean just kind of getting connected to stuff is just uh just be me being present you know um i in worked worked at a library since i was 14. Hmm. Uh, that was that's dope. Yeah, yeah, all the hats. That man. was a uh, yeah. I, I worked there for twenty years straight, and then I left uh, there to uh, work in the community because uh, I don't know. I felt like I was doing a lot of transactional work. You know, no pun intended, because literally I was doing transactions, like mm-hmm. you know, at the library. But um, with the scrap hours in my day, we were doing like really transformational things in my neighborhood. And it just felt like if I dedicated myself uh, a little bit more, maybe there'd be, you know, bigger and better wins to amass. So that was the oh. that was the aim. So is, is there anything yeah. that we, we would know that you you're a part of that has happened and say like any festivals wise, uh, anything? Um, uh, yeah, any I mean, programs. Yeah, it's my some my, my greatest hits. Uh, <laughs> we got yeah. a. Yeah, Yo, so Promo, you know man. we we, we organized to get the rapid stop rebuilt after three ladies were uh, attacked. You know, at that mm-hmm. rapid stop, that rapid stop was also where my parents met. Wow. You know, my mother is uh, was from the neighborhood. Also, my father's Pakistani, so you know it's just kind of an opportune uh, meeting uh, in that space, and uh, you know the public transit to do it right. Yeah. It's it's a yeah. broad cross section of people who ride that. But if um, my mother was boarding that rapid stop in the condition that it was in four or five years ago right. uh, will she be open to some man's advances you know what I'm saying right. in reality is terrified, terrified if someone no, walked absolutely up to you. not Joe he probably would have got maced even mm-hmm. if he had good good intentions mm-hmm. you know so you know it just is what it is and you just think about how you know experiences like that and just uh, like this controlled demolition that seems to happen in intentionally ignored neighborhoods it's, it's a uh it has long-term effects that we, you know, if we weren't, there's a value to staying in place, and staying in place kind of reminds you of the standard of living that existed before the degradation, you know? So mm. that's what I've been able to kind of advocate for is what I remember as a very small baby and what's been extended to me from my family who's been in place there for some time. So that was that was really big. Um, we had one public meeting in regards to that, and then the next um, board meeting, RTA agreed to, uh, rebuild the space, yeah, and then we got uh, St. Luke's to donate uh, 500 grand to it. And uh, we uh, also had identified in that one meeting that there was another thing that we lacked in the neighborhood, and that was uh, community resources. So, um, you know, I went down the street to Metro Health, and uh, we actually built out their resource center, which ex- exists today, uh, to, to this day. Uh, uh, with my Adrian Broner sound effect, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know that's that, that's some of the um, some of the stuff. Oh, we also when the Giant Eagle abruptly left, uh, we had organized a response around that. Um, we were pushing to uh, get um, the um, 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 
uh, plaza sold to local ownership, you know, ideally. Um, that didn't happen, but we were able to get it sold to an independent uh, uh, owner who does fly in and out on a regular basis. He's responsive. We have an event that we're doing this weekend there. Sure. Um, you know, so we were able to advocate for that. And again, like, it was my experience as a um, tenant in that space, you know, 10, 15 years ago that helped me to kind of work for and advocate for from a different perspective, you know. Um, but we, I had a lot of really unique experiences that really kind of, you know, along a really uh, winding road in the narrow neighborhood, you know, so yeah. I kind of touched every border of it and um, that's why I kind of stay in place and just try to uh, organize and work in the space that uh, I know I love and I feel like Noah loves me too. Dope. Yeah. Dope, super dope. Yeah. The 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 re reason I wanted you have that have you on is that exact reason, and you, you're a wealth of knowledge for s s somebody who wants to be in your your position to help as well. And I wanted you to have you on just the 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 give the, the game like like how a person should get a RTA bus stop changed or get yeah. get a uh, you use to take. Because, so take me, me, me and Moa pretty much rode the bus all our childhood or walked through everything. And like we, we knew which stops had a sit down area to it. Mm -hmm. And I wish I could have like had an analogy like, no, I need to have one here because it, it snows crazy. And yeah. I, I got to stand here the longest and standing here as a, 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 a 10 year old is super dangerous because these cars don't see me. It's six in the morning, and I gotta get and then, to then another two buses. That, the sidewalk is not even the shovel. Si the sidewalk so is covered in, in snow. Anyway, and I'm standing in the street, it's like, <laughs> and oh God. a lot of people just don't know how to talk to their council person or know who their council person is, how to get in contact with these nonprofits that are in the mix already, how to start their own nonprofit in general. Where can a person just e even start to get into the community and everything. Yeah. Um, well, we're always in community, right? I think a lot of us are um, where we are um, because of our social connections, mm -hmm. right? That's usually our gravitational pool to most places, right? Where we feel comfortable at, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it could be in a quote unquote dangerous place, but if these are your people, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? You're not really going to feel this like imminent danger that's, you know, maybe radiating from your TV you're set. You're yeah. comfortable in your, your, your area. Yeah, yeah. So I think that we need to realize, number one, that if you're in a community, you're uh, nine times out of ten around like minds, people who have similar perspectives. Um, there's power amongst you, right? Um, we just got to figure out um, I think the most important thing is to carve out time in your everyday life to um, kind of push back from from being in this player's perspective, right? This kind of li going through life and um, reacting to all of the plays and movements, mm -hmm. you know, on the defenses and, and, and offensive uh, uh, end. Um, but um, I think that that's kind of, it, it, you got to have a, a um, sort of a vantage point um, so where you can kind of see the big picture and see where the plays are, are made and watch the game film and that's that's a luxury, you mm -hmm. know. For so for most people, um, you know, it's it's a uh, it's a luxury to go to a, to a meeting. It's a luxury to keep up with what's going on on. In, yeah, the know, time, the time alone. Yeah, have the time I to mean, go most and, of it isn't even written in layman's terms. It's in legalese. It's in codified ordinance language. It's in you know this sort of language that. Has barriers, especially and when the, the majority... terrorist people. That's what the terrorist people. They make well, it that yeah, way. To yeah, the yeah, all, all day, right? So it's intentional. So, I mean, we there there are like roadblocks, you know, where there should be on ramps. Hmm. Um, but w w what we have to again recognize is that we we have a power and we have a perspective, and uh, we want the same thing that everyone else uh, wants, right? So when a lot of these like experiences are generational, right? Like impoverished living, right? Or chronic, uh, chronic, um, um, you know, like issues like, like poverty, chronic poverty, mm -hmm. right? Like 
um, it's just, uh, it seems impenetrable because it defines the whole standard of living and like what's possible. And it affects what, your way of thought. It's yeah, like, and, like the, are you hopeful at all, yeah. right? Do, mm. where, where do you see hope at? Or is, is there an where opportunity? Where do you see hope at? Man, that, that, that's a big, a big one for a lot of people. And I talked about, about this with Maul, where we're going to these different places, starting to travel more and everything. And how we got our blinders on to all the abandoned buildings around us. Mm -hmm. Like when we're driving and then you you haven't you, you've been you've been you've been out of town for a week. Yeah. And you realize how many abandoned spots abandoned spots you're pulling past when you're coming home and you're like, damn, like why is there a whole block that just just nothing? It's and control that, and that circles right around to it's up to you to call in and get that stuff taken care of, half or the time. or to see about buying it. Seeing yeah, like because because there's there's buildings on like I grew up on 105. There's b b buildings on 105 that has been empty since I've been born. Like I can't remember a time where I seen anybody walk in and out of these buildings. Mm -hmm. And one just got got tore down. I'm like, man, I'm like, damn, like, how much would that bitch have cost for real? Like, That's what was the that's that's really how you get engaged in your neighborhood, right? It's that sort of like um that sort of entrepreneurial thinking, right? Mm -hmm. Like not necessarily looking at something that's blighted, but looking at it as an opportunity, right? right. Mm -hmm. That alone will get you kind of connected and figuring out like what the processes are, who owns what, how is this I mean, sometimes like just I mean, East Cleveland is a great example too, right? Like I, I remember I used to have a friend who worked at the uh uh, land bank, the uh, county land bank, mm -hmm. and like sometimes when I would see things that were on the, they would like update their list and like every Monday or Tuesday or whatever, I'd always look at it, and they uh, had uh, like one, it seemed like all but one parcel on the street was for sale in East mm -hmm. Cleveland, like the entire street was for sale, hmm. and I was asking, I was like, yo, is this possible? Like, uh, can I buy this? Like, can, yeah. is this possible? And she's like, no, like it's reserved for like a developer, right? You know what I'm saying? So it's you it's that sort of control. Like it it's, not yeah. Yeah, it's not just a control. Yeah, yeah. It's not just a control demolition. And then demolition. on top of that, if yeah. you, if you buying it for for an investment versus like an actual home to live in, yeah. you got to put twenty percent down. Say this house is like two hundred eighty five thousand, two hundred something. That's fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. Most yeah. people don't got that yeah. just sitting yeah. in the bank. So yeah, it's like yeah, they they did. Uh, it was another uh, situation like. Whatever they appraise or assess the uh, the rebuild for is what you have to prove that you I got a credit line for. So even hmm. though like you say like yo you saying it's sixty for for me to get it repaired, but no, like me and hmm. I wouldn't handle some of this myself. And yep. I know some folks to do this and do that and do this. I could probably get it for twenty four. They don't care about nope. that. that. They only exactly. care about you having that sixty that credit line for that. So again, like there's always That's, like you these just, unique barriers. You brought that to my attention about the reserve thing. Like, it makes sense on their side where they're like, why sell to one person that can buy one building? You can sell to the, the, the whole block yeah. and have six chain stores, whatever you want to have in it, mm -hmm. that's already established, already have, has a record, has the money in the bank already to do all they need to do. But that also come down to the city too because they have a plan in motion already on what they want the city to look like and to be. Ideally. Yeah. But Ideally. If, they, if they don't have the infrastructure to actually move any of that, mm -hmm. then what's the, what good is the plan you can't move? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just a piece of paper. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So... I, th I think it's, it's I think that uh, East Cleveland is being suffocated. I think to a degree, right? It's not necessarily getting the sort of support that it, it, it direly needs. Um, you know, Cleveland was granted a certain uh, amount of money to absorb them. I think maybe like five or ten years ago, mm. and they like pushed the offer back and said that wasn't enough money. Really? Um, and so <laughs> yeah. you know, it seems that there's been some options that have been exhausted, you know, behind closed doors. And that's only my like understanding yeah. of what happened like a few years later, you know. So um, you know, somebody else could look that up after, mm -hmm. you know, quote me on what I don't didn't, quote us, you know. Look yeah. it up yourself. That's yeah, what the research yeah, for. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, use them on the internet, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. But um what really aided with our work in the neighborhood was that we had a monthly uh, meeting called Neighborhood Network Night. Okay. And so it was a uh, um, really like a lighthouse, you know, for folks who were looking for a community. And, you know, if you build they, it, they'll come. Yeah. Type thing. So, yes, you sir. Know, folks knew to come story. there. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, and a lot of that can happen at your community centers or local, like, like YMCA, like where people come and congregate on their own. Free will type thing. And they, 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 they use the locations for free? 
for the yeah. uh, for the setup. So I mean, each neighborhood was kind of kind of had their own like distinct situation. You know, mm-hmm. like we got specific neighbor nights. The irony is, is that neighbor nights kind of being the platform that really launched a lot of advocacy on my end. Um, it, those are organized by Neighborhood Connections, and now I work for Neighborhood Connections, right? Mm-hmm. So that's kind of like the cyclic, like nature. Like, man, this this space meant so much to me, and um, here I am now working and co- you know curating the space myself. But mm-hmm. to answer that question, like there are different neighbor nights that are um, hosted, like throughout the neighborhood. I mean, throughout the city, and uh, and even beyond. Like I know that there's one in Lorraine. I know that there's one that's being organized in North Collinwood. I know that there are some folks in Central Kinsman who are trying to build one out. Um, we got our arts and culture neighbor night. We used to have a like a citywide neighbor night. Um, I know that there was one in West Park. I know that you know. So there's some like different, yeah. different pockets of neighborhoods, but ours uh, in Buckeye was always um, um, like the largest one. It seemed like our network was the largest. So on average, our meetings would have like anywhere between like 90 and 140 people at it, right? <laughs> and so it's really like, it always ends with us like breaking bread and kicking it and stuff. So it was mm-hmm. really like, we'd always had like focused time. There's an actual um, like function to neighbor night. Like there's four different, you know, um, um, like portions of it or mm-hmm. whatnot. And it mm-hmm. flows a, different, a certain way. Um, but it always rolls right into this space where we're like eating together and breaking bread and just kind of rubbing elbows and getting to know each other. And that's what it's really about, right? So... Um, you want to bring the community together. That's the the, the, the goal. You're stronger as a whole. Yeah, You're stronger yeah, as a whole. Yeah, that's real. And a lot of these things can be found on like like a, a a Facebook group. The Facebook groups are are big for the community and 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 getting the word out about things. Like yeah. if you want to be a part of these things, like do your research. And the sooner you get into it, the younger you are, you get into it, the, the more you can have an effect on it because you can yeah. start to to. To I don't say dictate, but help p- progress things you want to see in your community earlier. Yeah. And if you're fighting for when you're 14, when you're 28, it's gonna be something totally different. But you've had that chance to see the the, the inner working, see all the the, yeah. the way it is it's done. And again, I, I don't say I, I wish I would have had it at that age because I don't know if I would have did it. I don't right. know if I would have had that that mentality to be like. Hey, I can get a bus stop put here so I don't have to walk all the way around the corner and yeah. through different hoods to get. <laughs> I think it had right. to be exhibited for you for exactly. you to do it. Like exactly. otherwise, like who's got the fortitude at that? You know what? You just made me think about. I I miss when um like one of like a I, I guess like a team builder for Cleveland when he had the bikeathons. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I miss that. That was good. Yeah. That was like you drive from you probably drive for like two miles, two mm-hmm. to three miles, and you just the whole city on bikes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Fire. stuff like that happens that does it happen in the areas that we want it to happen in like is it used is it, to yeah not it, no more <laughs> yeah, 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 and because yeah. you can get something like, like that in a chardon mm-hmm. they'll ride their whole little whole little joint all together and end up at a little mom yeah. and pop shop yeah. that's what we that's what we want to happen where you ride around Buckeye end up at the barbecue spot or the vegan spot that's just open with whatever you want to do mm. and have the whole neighborhood a block party, wherever you, whatever it is. Yeah, but you know, like comparison is the thief of joy, right? Mm. Like we don't even right. want to think about these other all folks, right. man. Like we really need to start where we have. We all, like again, aspirationally, we all want the same thing. That's yeah. what we identify here. Mm-hmm. But our role, I mean, our our, our starting blocks is, is set somewhere back way before, like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So um, I also do, like, a bunch of uh, block parties in my neighborhood called the Buckeye Summer Soul mm-hmm. Series, right? So Great transition. Uh, we do, uh, and that's what it reminds me of, right? Like, we changed the block party laws in the city of Cleveland based off our Juneteenth event, right? Mm-hmm. So that's, that's uh, in 2020, we had, like, Four. Explain the laws for them. Explain, explain well, them. so the law was uh, before previously that um, it was mandated that you had to have four badge police officers at your event, mm-hmm. um, and they were paid. Um, most of the time, they were off duty, and they were getting paid like twenty eight dollars an hour, mm-hmm. something like that, right? Like, don't again use the internet's. Yeah. Right. You, yeah. you, you know what I'm saying? But it was some sort of a crazy number. And so what we did the math on was that on the average, not then this isn't ours. We're talking about citywide because we work with folks 
um, on the west side also with this, but what they found, like they kind of like pulled me into their research because I didn't do any of the research, mm -hmm. so I should be clear on that. But they did this research and said that um, the fees for the police alone accounted for 40% of all of every uh, like block party, the like problem. majority yeah. of block yeah. parties, yeah. like expenses. funding, right? The expenses. Mm -hmm. So it was like, yo, like mm. we're really cutting off resources from the neighborhood. And it's like, uh, you know, you, you, the, a police car drives by and says protect and serve them. Uh, is, is that not what you're doing in this space? So there was like this conversation that was being had or this argument that was being made, like, why do you really yeah. need yeah. to be paying them in general? At yeah, that this point? is your job, right? Like, yeah. is it not, to protect like, and serve the yeah. neighborhood. And, and, yeah, and, 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 and how is it ever a bad thing for you to get connected with your neighborhood right. on this level, right? So why right. can't cops send them out on duty? That's what I'm saying, right? Like, so it was like a whole thing. So we actually started having all of all of our June teams for the last uh, six to seven years, or however long we've been doing them. Mm -hmm. um, they've never featured any police presence. And like I said, in 2020, we had a uh, freedom walk with uh, NAACP, which was hijacked uh, and turned into like the Freedom Fest downtown. And uh, you know, all of this stuff, like I'm just saying like bits and pieces and elements of the stuff that we've, and seeds that we planted have, uh, you know, they've, they've, uh, they've been hit with the GMO and uh, you know, everything isn't what it seems. Mm. Uh, but we've always been kind of focused on uh, the upward uh, ascension of, of the neighborhood and, yeah. and the people as a, in general, and that's the distinct difference. But um, that uh, Juneteenth event is part of a series of events that happen in the neighborhood. And um, um, those things, again, like they are um, much like what you said, in small doses, we've done uh, art murals and, uh, painted all sorts of stuff. I mean, done all sort of beautification. We just redid a park at Helen Simpson. Um, you know, oh. it's a, a ton of stuff that we've done. So it's like in small doses, like we're yeah, we're able to create those moments. You know, but it's spreading, and you're and you're touching communities, and you're and you're making. Mm -hmm. I, there's a mural that I, again I passed every day on my walk home, where I was like, oh, that's a, that's a a a cool mural that showcased a black family on there. Yeah, and subconsciously like i don't know what that did to me but it was black children two black parents right, like right. that's a big deal in that situation me going home to a a, a single mother household like yeah, like yeah. that that's a, a a vision where it was like all right there's you aware of that family. aware of that yeah, yeah. aware of that being this skin color and in, in this area and everything yeah, and it can be so, common it can be real and a, a lot of that didn't hit me, I, I'll say, until, like, the last two years where, where I became very aware of, like, parents are people, too. Mm -hmm. I can't knock them for not being a stock trader in their 25s and shit like that and, and saving up and doing all this and, and doing all that where my mom say, didn't have a, My mom never drove a car. Right. Never drove a car. Really, still? Never drove a car. Mm. And that's a... a, a generational thing mm -hmm. that's a, a thing where it was like uh 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 a lot of that age women didn't want to drive or didn't didn't have the ability to drive they didn't learn and then uh, all of that so when it came to her i'm like why why did you, i just never have to failing to do it now whatever subconscious thing that came from mm -hmm. her something as a child whatever it was she's just like not my job she caught the bus all her life so when you say those things, where it's like the women were attacking me, I I understand because she got up at five thirty in the morning every day to go to the University Hospital, two buses, every day. So I can only imagine the the fear, because it wasn't no sheltered shot uh, uh, stop at our top of the street. Thank God it was at the top of the street, mm -hmm. but it was always fucking you know they don't clear those those side streets out. So I. I came very aware in her her older age of like, all right, so what what are the public transportations for an elderly woman? Because I drop her off everywhere. So I'm like, is there any type of the, 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 there is a um uh the the minivan, the little little yeah. mini buses, or whatever. Oh, the that, circulator. Yeah, the circulator yeah. and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them actually come pick you up from your house. They come drop pick you, you up your location. for a dollar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like dollar, dollar twenty five. Yeah, for a dollar yeah. you can call and schedule it. Mm -hmm. And I try to get my mom hip to it, and the, the the whole planning it out thing, and like having them having to call twenty four hours ahead. She don't want to do that. She, she likes to be independent. Mm -hmm. 
But her, mm-hmm. but by her independence is low key. Well, hint, well, yeah, that's well, why you in this predicament exactly, in the first place. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, mm, I started to try to look into that's more wild. of those public services because it's not just my mom. I know it's a, it's a lot of people that probably don't have kids yeah. that are in the town in the city that are like, all right, well, mm-hmm. how are they getting a little bit, bit extra food this month? Mm-hmm. How are they getting to the doctors this month? How are they just going to the laundromat? And just taking their clothes and all that. And a part of this show should be to include the community more. Again, that's why we have you on. Just the 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 get the get the mindset out there. Like, yeah, you, you can affect things right now. Having you can kids, kids, if you if you're on your your yeah. Xbox Live, y'all can start a little mini group on there and say, All right, well, well I'm gonna put this on Facebook or Twitter or whatever and see what and see who pops up at my uh, YMCA and stuff like that to have a meeting. Like those mm-hmm. things can, can be easily done. Mm-hmm. Whereas a kid, we, we we were still talking on the phone to our best friends, trying to trying to coordinate on a three way to go somewhere and stuff like sure, that. So if you really get deep into mm-hmm. it, if y'all are already on there, y'all might as well just set aside some time and just start talking, hashing out. Start right there. Start talking about some yeah. stuff yeah. Y'all, can y'all do. on the system. Start yeah. talking about some stuff y'all can do. Yeah, yeah, um, that's real. Slight transition. Are you a sports person at all? Are you are you in the sports at all? Yeah. Um, yeah. Sports is my savior, man. Awesome. Uh, the 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 Browns two and one. Yeah, Browns yeah, two yeah. and one. And in the first place, yeah, yeah, yeah. They just had a and and this is a conversation. Should have been three and up because you know. y'all got kids, and I'm and I'm I'm thinking about it all that. Uh, would y'all <laughs> let y'all child play football these days? Because we just seen Tua, who is the quarterback of the Dolphins. He last week was supposedly had a back problem, but it looked like a concussion for real. Mm-hmm. This week he gets hit twice. He gets hit for the last time in the second quarter. I don't say it was a hard slam, but he got slammed down. See, Boom! Hit his head. Fingers went crossed. Yeah. Fingers went crossed. Yeah. So, so this this is my thing, right? Mm-hmm. You you would know you are you're gonna know when your child is built for it or not. <laughs> Facts. Attitude, Facts. period. Yeah, right. So off right. top alone, it, it's low key not even your choice. Yeah, yeah. You influence it by the passion you have in that sport. Yeah. So with that being said, that kid is gonna determine like, all right, I want to do this. Right. Then it's low key gonna be out your but, hands. But but, but but do you let them? It's but but with the, but like, with that but with them. that being said, do you let them? I mean, it just depends on how much they want it because if they gonna train for it, yeah. If you think about it, a quarterback is the only player who can't really prepare for his hit. He don't practice getting hit. You can't he practice. practice slide they practice not hitting the quarterback. Yeah, yeah. He don't practice taking hits. He don't yeah. practice going out there to hit somebody. So when he's standing still at zero miles per hour getting hit by a 35 mile per hour man, yeah. I mean, that a, is the most dangerous crash. spot on the field. It's a car yeah. crash. It's yeah. definitely a car that alone, crash. you got the other players who are going 35 and 35. So it's like, yeah. But with that being said, a lot of players are are learning how to properly fall down. Mm-hmm. They are learning how to hit, take that tackle. The tackles are becoming different. But as a quarterback, I mean, it, you, if if you don't prepare, almost, if you key. don't prepare your body for this Blind particular side, the left particular side. spot, you you gonna you gonna suffer the replica, uh, repercussions. Mm-hmm. Second, um, that man got cleared. I don't even. Qu- I, Quote, quote, unquote, unquote clear. clear. So I don't even know how to feel about that. Yeah. You feel me? Because they were supposed to be working his best interests. Let alone so, you working in your own. So I get you going out association. <laughs> I get you going out there like, I got to get this in. The I got to win this game. But at the same time, it's like, bro. It's, it's, a business. <laughs> it's a business, bro. Doing an investigation <laughs> on the Dolphins. Mm-hmm. It's a business. It is a business. And, that's, and, and they didn't know Tua was going to be that good. These Dang. first three games, we gotta Dang. keep you in as long as we can. At, at this point, okay. And Tua don't want to lose his job because he because he came in on the hot seat. He doing good. I'm not mm. go, coming out for nothing. And on top of that, your backup was low key nice. That's what so he got the interception. Ex- ex- so when it comes, it's Teddy Bridgewater too. Teddy's a great backup. He comes in, he plays. They still win games. He just has those interceptions type moments. He can't take care of the ball. And when it 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 do we. Do we, are we blaming anybody? Is this a is this a is this a, a organizational thing because they are getting investigated, or is this a tool thing, saying, "Hey, bro, you should be thinking about your career in ten years, 
not winning these six games now because you're not going to be able to spell if you keep going on this route. I feel like... And that's what I'm like it de- fucked up it de- about it with, depends with, 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 on, with football. I feel like it depends yeah. on his particular outcome because if it comes out negative, then then the question is who you blame. Bro, he was on the ground for five and a half minutes. <laughs> not moving. <laughs> yeah. Carried off on a stretcher. Didn't even put a thumb up or nothing like that. I think it's more no. so questioning. Like, what did you not see? Yeah. You feel me? Like, like we clearly saw what you saw with Mayhem. Like, but what, what was what was you missing? Like, how did you... See, here's the crazy part about it. We saw him stumble on camera last week. Yeah. That, that wasn't a back. Ah, oh, my back. That was a... I'm woozy. I'm going back down because yeah. I thought I could run off the field. And they said it was a back. And... Somebody. It's a lot of players that probably saw that and was like, oh, bro, I know exactly what that is, and I'm not gonna say nothing. And 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 it's 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 a crazy. I came into this season of football. I saw like a college team playing for the first. I'm like, I am, I am. I think I'm too old to watch this now. <laughs> <laughs> that hurt me from here. I'm just seeing these people just get bam, bam, bam. I'm like, oh. oh. My thing is the little the like to me they look smaller than the people I'm used to seeing on the field, mm. right? So it's like y'all hitting that hard. <laughs> Imagine it was like if we had that speed with I mean, the size. Well, that's where you get yeah. the Aaron Donalds. Like, oh my god! You get the Aaron Donalds, the uh, the, the, the Miles Garrett. Mm-hmm. Get, like we had an Aaron on. Donalds in, in, on our line who was. Who you you would assume it was a teacher? Yeah, <laughs> like you assumed that he was a a, a forty five adult, year old adult man, man, but and nah. indeed he was seventeen. Yeah, full six, grown man six, beard, six, like four. no beard, six four on a seventeen year old. Like <laughs> what, bro? Like come on, exactly man. This is just, just huge, <laughs> and they're like that. They're even like that now at twelve, and it's like, all right, so we're, so am I putting? If 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 my child walks in at a smooth five five at ten years old, all right, cool, cool, right? But there's a six foot twelve year old that, that he's playing against <laughs> that I got a six six at that. It could be six six, could, yeah. could be six three at this point. Over six foot twelve year old that he got to go play against. That's the quarterback, the running back, the, the wide receiver, the strong safety. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the crazy part is they're popping out like like it's. But beforehand, it was like, damn, that's rare. Now yeah. it's like, oh, no, another one? It's breeding. It's, yeah, it's like another one, another <laughs> one, another breeding. one. It's like, it's yeah. called saying, I like, want somebody over this height, and she got to be over this height. You feel as well. it's like the technology we got because to train these kids. We're to going be to the, the track. That we want them to <laughs> we're be going to the track. Whatever it this. takes. Whatever it takes. It's a new, yeah, and it's a new mindset, too, because a lot of them just dedicated. I mean, and they just be on and, it. And you can get paid. Yeah, the uh, the kid Mikey Williams in in, in basketball. Yep, now nah, he getting he, paid. He signed a Puma. He signed a Puma for some M's. Mm. For some M's, oh, that's what's and up, he's yeah. and he's still he's still a junior. It's not even his senior year yet. That's dope. So he he went on. Um, I think uh, I think it's I am athlete podcast, and he's talking about just like knowing you it already, but trying to m- mitigate it being a kid. Like he's a business already. Man, he's yo, already a business. He's, that's that's amazing. He's he's already a business. So he's, he's talking about like, okay, I got this handle and this. I got this handle and this. Um, and they're like, so where do you find time just to be a kid? Be a kid. He's like, yeah, I, I play some games sometimes, but like I'm focused right now. Like this is there's a there's an end goal and I see it. And I'm like, I can't, I like I gotta respect that because. If this was any other profession, like if 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 he was a genius at, at that age, he'll be doing all the college courses, the math courses, and trying to be a scientist mm-hmm. at sixteen already. Yeah. The you, you, you go overseas, they got these soccer players in there from yeah. they don't even really go to school. Shit, look, they got for music. You you starting off at at what two years old, yeah, if, and you being if, bred to if be you're a, a prodigy. Yeah, you feel me? Like you're getting tutored. Yeah, yeah. So this ain't nothing different. different. Yeah, and then no, you're no, going no. off to play music. You, you're not going to school for eight hours. You're, you're yeah. playing the instrument for eight hours. Then you're tutoring it. That's Part. such a big deal, though, man. It made me think about uh, like when I was in high school. Um, I forget what the little sports, but it was like who's who in sports, mm-hmm. right? And, like, you would get your rating in basketball and this and that. It was statewide. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember we had a couple of guys that was in our high school that was ranked 
higher than LeBron at the time because mm. LeBron was like a rookie or something like mm-hmm. that. I mean, it was like a rookie. A freshman. Uh, a freshman, mm-hmm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just thinking about, like, just being able to hover around LeBron, like, on that rating list and being able to monetize that now. Like, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, Social if that media opportunity was available. Yeah, I mean, it's just, just crazy just the, the shift in the culture and just how many opportunities just kind of created by just the digitization of everything, you know? The, they were um, talking to Reggie Bush as well. Mm. And they talk about how college Reggie Bush should have been re- way fresher re- than pro NFL Reggie oh, Bush if he would have gotten monetized yeah. his life. NCAA alone. The football, the football game. <laughs> Alone, game, he should have got came up. Like Bush. he was on the front, he was on the cover. Those juke moves you were his juke moves. Every juke move on the game was Reggie Bush's juke moves. They didn't Hands make down. up any other juke moves. They oh. took every one of his juke every moves and were his juke moves for the entire game series. The only thing they did was change the speed. Yeah, they changed the speed, and of course, was, Reggie Bush had the fastest his, speed. The behind the back with the ball, and then you stop on the boom, and you keep running. That's a Reggie Bush move that. I've never seen beforehand, but, 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 but in that level, yeah. and he's on there. He's talking about it like that. Dave tarnished his name and took away the Heisman, and he to this day says, "I never took any money." What they're talking about is a house that a family friend who's a real estate agent had on the market. They got kicked out of their place, evicted because their owner of their house sold their house. Huh? Just just sold it and didn't tell the landlord or, or or them anything, and they had to move in a month. Friend of the family, I got y'all. That's what the NCAA said that because he paid for it. No, the the they say that the friend is is the one uh, trying to get paying something for her. Reggie to go to school there, I guess, or what, whatever they try to spend it towards. It was like here's a payment and it's a house. Mm-hmm. And that came back. I, I think when, as soon as he got in the league, it came the back out. They took the Heisman the second year he was in the league. He got hurt that third year and won the Super Bowl that fourth year. I knew he did get him a ring. He got him a ring, he got but, him a ring with the Saints, but, but he wasn't was a he wasn't a star. It was Mark Ingram in there then, yeah. and he was running around and he he was just catching the ball for real. But he couldn't stay. He couldn't stay healthy, and a lot of that would have been different. Like, imagine how different that would have been if they didn't put that stigma on his name. I think he would have had a different... His career... Well, if he didn't get hurt, too. If he didn't get hurt, but but, but the re- the recognition of his talent mm-hmm. at USC would have been higher because they they don't they, they don't talk about him. They don't show his highlights. They don't give him a banner. They don't... <laughs> They don't do anything like and player ninety nine. Yeah, player ninety nine. Basically, <laughs> he's he's, 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 he, he's just there. Yeah. But they gave Matt Liner all the, the accolades and like uh, who was his backup there? He went to Tennessee, Henry, or or no, Ladanian, Ladanian. L- L- he had a backup that was a big, a big running back that went and he he gets more props. But all them dudes, oh, Thompson. Daniel Thompson. Was that what you were supposed to say? It sounded like, felt like you were I, I want to say that, but ain't that for the Chargers? It just, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah it's another, I think it's another LD or some type okay. thing. But yeah. anyway, uh, LaShawn McCord was saying how he went to visit and Matt Liner had a Bentley, receiver had a Hummer, and Reggie was like, you ain't see no knowledge driving because I wasn't driving. I didn't even have a car. So like even that, I was like, well, he don't. Why would he lie now? There's no reason to lie. Retired out the game, mm-hmm. like, well, what is he lying about? And it? now you getting paid for it now too. You like, can get paid for it to be okay. Pacman was like, I got paid. <laughs> I, they paid me. I came and I I took that money. Right. Pacman was like, hey, I took that money and 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 I'm glad I would take it again. Cause he didn't make it to the league, did he? No, no. I mean, like, like really, like had a good I'm, career. No, he uh. Pac-Man was with the Cowboys, Cincinnati. He just kept getting arrested and in trouble and shit like that. Bar fights and all that shit. White boy? No, Pac-Man Jones, bro. The dreads, bro. Pac-Man Jones. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Pac-Man Jones, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I need to talk about now. Yeah. But 
Who wouldn't take that money though? You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying, bro. You can't tell me. Like, but I guess Reggie did. I guess Reggie did. That's what I'm saying. Like, like the ones that didn't take it was Reggie. Because even even if your college life is cool, I bet you back home isn't as cool as your college life. You're going to be, if somebody offering you a real bag, yeah, you gonna be Texas thinking about man, my mom's is you know, I can get her up out the neighborhood. I can do that. I can do that. Oh, I can send my little kids, and my little sister, oh, and my sauce. All and your siblings can is, go to that college. And the worst part is, your family can't even accept the money on your behalf. That's yeah, the dumbest right. part about it, though. Right. So, so the loophole that that we were talking about earlier before, before this came down as a new uh, uh, rule was if you had a child. And you got a slogan, catchphrase, and you put a part of that business in their name. Mm-hmm. So you, you can have a business in your child's name and get them all the business credits you want. So uh, so as they're coming up, that slogan, whatever, they, they wearing the T-shirts for it because that's just y'all family business. Y- y- y'all got a, re- re- a restaurant, y'all got a shoe, a shoe yeah. line, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. But that's just y'all slogan, and he can... Big baller that. right there. That's big baller. Big brand baller. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's big baller. Brand. Big baller. Exactly. Brand. Yeah. <laughs> One more um, sports thing, and then we're going to wrap it up soon. Uh, uh, the Ime Udoka scandal. I'm not in here to, to judge anybody on what they're doing and who they're doing it with. I'm not saying I will really too verse on it. So, Ime Udoka is the Celtics coach. Right. They suspended him for the year. Okay. After going to the finals last year, right. for a year, he the head coach, right? Head coach, head yeah. coach. Uh, probably around thirty-six, thir- six, six, eight. Pretty handsome, pretty handsome fella. Let me mm-hmm. say that. Pretty handsome fella. This man dating Nia Long. Dating Nia Long. Pretty ha- like I said, pretty handsome fella. Dating Nia Long. Just moved her to uh, the Boston area, and they suspend him for a year for a consensual. Relationship with a staffer is what the Celtics first responded with. Mm. So everybody around the, the social medias and sports center, all that's like, why a whole year for something that a lot of people probably do in the workplace? Well, it's said that it wasn't just one staffer; it was a multitude of staffers. Oh yeah, because uh, what's his name? Um, Matt Barnes. Matt Barnes like, had to take like it back. A whole lot worse. Yeah, had to take it back. It was. I was like, what the so it's most of the staffers. Oh, wow. And it's uh uh uh, they told him to stop. That was the kicker. It was like, hey, bro, we know what you're doing. Oh. Can you chill out a little bit? It's getting a little, it get a little wild over here now. The last straw, he went after the secretary to the VP. <laughs> May have been an unwanted pregnancy there. Oh my god! So they had to. And they can't fire him. My man's wildin'. Wildin'. Can't fire him because because it wasn't in the rules to be fired. It was, it was a suspension. It wasn't in the rules? It wasn't in the, uh, the How, code of conduct. Explain an unwanted pregnancy. Exactly. So how is there no firing involved? Well, as in, they, it wasn't a planned pregnancy type thing. They, was, they shouldn't have been fucking around. They got caught because she was on the, the, uh, the phone... I guess talking to him or about him, and and her, and her husband heard the ring, the uh, heard it through the ring camera. So she on the porch, blah blah blah. He tune running, right email, who pregnant? Bitch, what you talking turned, about? Turned up, turned up. <laughs> so now everybody's talking about um, should they fire him because he'll get another <laughs> job. He'll get another job quickly. <laughs> Should they keep him? Can he even go back to that? Is it going to be even like respect factor and all that? And there's a lot of pundits that are like he making me feel he got a lot of unwanted pregnancies in that in that uh, corporation. It's a lot of pundits who yeah. are saying if he if everything in there is consensual, should the woman be fired too or 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 suspended as well? So now there's a, a both sides where it's like don't blame the victim, and the other side is like is there a victim because it's all consensual. Is it consensual? That's what they're saying. But if it is, why is it mm-hmm. such a long suspension instead of go home for a couple months? Maybe you got a sex addiction. 
And that's what they're saying. <laughs> Maybe, Maybe, gotta go. <laughs> they Maybe gotta to go to rehab or something like they that. They told him to stop trying to fuck staff members. They, they told him to stop doing <laughs> it. Stop. Not, not, so not, not, not fucking stop. the staff members. Trying okay, to fuck or, or no, fucking no, the staff. No, no, no. Stop doing it. Period. Stop, <laughs> stop <laughs> fucking your staff Because he was members. running through them. That's they crazy. Said. He oh was, and they, it had to be some internal beef. It had to be some. See, I kind of, I kind of understand why. Like, there's an absurdity to it mm -hmm. to a degree, right? Like, you keep thinking like staff members. Like, so there's a million women that just don't work for the Celtics, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so just pick one of them, right? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But also, you got to think about like the profession. You know, like how much time he's probably spending throughout the day with some variation of a, of like coaching ensemble yeah. staff. Uh, just the team, at the, office, yeah, the yeah. whole, yeah, the whole, not like his entire existence, even the off season. In the off season for him, he's scouting with, right, you know, right. this and that. Yeah, you and know what I'm saying. The worst part about it was social media got a hold of it and just started blaming the wrong woman. Just start mm. like, oh, she it because she was the most attractive. It was a, yeah, was a yeah, fine yeah, yeah, assistant yeah, yeah. coach next to him. It was yeah. like, oh yeah, she did it. Yeah, <laughs> I saw her. the photo, and I bet he had no relations. No relationship. She, yeah. she married. She was like, it wasn't me. Blah blah blah. blah. Uh, you know, not a child with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> she like, it's not me. Yeah, <laughs> it's not me. I would have snitched the first day. So th they're saying that that's gonna like it should be re revealed sooner or later with all the information, but. So far, I've gotten that it was a, a v, the, the VP's assistant that he. he we don't even need to know all that stuff. Exactly. Man. This is exactly. just ridiculous. But <laughs> again, the media ain't got nothing else. It's still baseball season. The, like hey, football so going, it's so it's going, but it ain't going. Going. They need. They need to add like, hey, three you? hours. Hey, guess what, y'all? <laughs> Scan scandal in the yeah. NBA. And and, and oh, you just. Man, please. I'm gonna wrap it up. With Kendrick Perkins, man. Kendrick Perkins is a funny dude. Hey, man. He, wait, he, yeah. wait. Wait, because I, I saw that he was in the video. Now, was he really in the video with no. those clips? Because those are like clips to me. The, what, what, what Maul is talking about is there's a Detroit rapper that was on Say Cheese that made a, a music video where he's a pundit on a sports center show. Mm -hmm. And he and it's called Kendrick Perkins. And the hook is like, let me talk about shit. I'm Kendrick Perkins. Mm -hmm. And so he has like him in a box. It's Kendrick. It's, perfect it's though. Perfect. Perfectly. Very good. The green like scale. The editing I, is crazy. I, I, I'll send it to you. It's really the good. It's crazy. pretty good. <laughs> and he and it's perfect green scale where he looks like he's on the ESPN shows and he's rapping and he's like got a cup of lean in the same rapping. Because at one it's point you see it just, you, know. you can tell that it was edited in. Yeah. But at some point it's like, it looked Perkins, real. Is you really like, it looked Curtis? great. Yeah, it looked yeah. It, it was great editing on his part, whoever the guy is, real good. But Kendrick Perkins doesn't give a fuck. That's why they're bringing it up because he really doesn't give a fuck. And he was adamant about, no, we need to know who this girl is and she needs to be submitted too. I'm, and, and, Thank God for black women. The black woman host was like, okay, look, Perk, <laughs> I get what you're saying. And she went on like a good three minute cleanup for him. Yeah. <laughs> it was like commercial. Yeah. And then he let yeah. him get a response back yeah. into it. Cause she knew it was like, you're trying to get suspended too, aren't you, brother? You trying mm -hmm. to get suspended. You no, know, you're trying to get canceled, really. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You don't give a fuck. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's <laughs> sports. Sports in a, a, a handbag. Oh. Brent Favre. Well, let's bring some light to this Brent Favre shit. Stealing $5 million from a Mississippi welfare fund. To stealing. Build, stealing. Stealing, Brent. Stealing. Hey. Stealing. Mr. Favre himself. To build a volleyball <laughs> stadium for his daughter. His daughter's team. Oh, that's what it was for? Getting no press. Getting no press at all. And this is not Brent Favre's first... Dealing too. He got I'm about to say of, like it's this he got is a lot of new that a white man stole some money from a charity fund in America. <laughs> and we, but and they, the fact that you just said that they it done was that before. for a volleyball, volleyball court, volleyball they never stadium, did that before, a man. stadium for volleyball, <laughs> what? volleyball stadium, volleyball hey, the, stadium. Hey, bro, Mississippi that's, that's some cartel welfare? shit right there for Mississippi, real. Mississippi, it's some Ozark shit. That's the some, Mississippi yeah. welfare system, like you know how poor Mississippi is. This stuff from them. <laughs> we gonna we we not gonna forget about. It. I'm gonna bring that up again, Brett Favre. Because that's a like that, that happened Favre. like down south like that. We don't never hear about. We it. not hearing about it now. Yeah. <laughs> that's the crazy part. He's a champion. Six months later, <laughs> who who is actively being investigated right now because of his dealings, and we're not talking about it because they were they were to talk about uh, fucking Tua or or yeah. this email thing where there's actively you know what stolen, stolen and it's it's stolen or you can't get the money back. The, the stadium's built, stadium built, done. <laughs> 
So they was down brick by yeah, brick. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So he got paid back. So that that's alone crazy. is 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 wild. I want so to get wait, that wait, out there. Wait, wait, like, like, like Brett Favre. It, he was after his retirement, after, but after yeah. his retirement, he looks. He seems like the perfect person for this particular position, like yeah. that, like the evil guy in some comedian movie about mm-hmm. stuff. Let's not like forget the dick pics. <laughs> either. Like, he got it. Through Let's those. not forget the dick pics. He got what now? He was sending out dick pics to people. He was a comedian. Oh, he he had a couple scandals. It wasn't his wife either. It was not his wife. So. Brad Favre is not the 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 angel that they paint him to be at all. I don't think he ever was. I mean, hey, hey. Well, at a certain age, you can't take him as an angel, bro. Yeah, well, that's just how I go. That's the, that's what you when, when you're rich and rich. and you can, all the and be in the folks. mix. You get you get that shit off. But I'm not gonna forget that, Brett. I'm not. <laughs> the way we like to wrap up the show is we go around and say what we're reading, watching, or listening to, and we will start with Mom. Tell us what you're reading, watching, or listening uh, to. Something. Watching, I just watched Imperfect on uh, Netflix. The what? In, Imperfect, okay. the, the Imperfects. Okay. Um, it's pretty solid. It's basically like supernatural meets science world ish type shit. Because basically, he just genetically modified everybody's uh, DNA. And now you low key got some interest in uh safe shit and shit that might be like supernatural type shit. It's pretty cool. Six episodes, I mean, or no, ten episodes. It's pretty solid. Can't complain on that. Um, I'm back and forth on if I'm really going to watch this Jeffrey Donald shit. I don't want to watch it, bro. For like the simple fact is this: I had more white people ask me, "Did I watch it?" Uh, than I had black people ask me, "Did I watch it?" I don't like that. And that part makes me feel some type of way. Because they say it's good. And I was like, I don't need to hear you tell me that it's good. You see, it's... No matter how intention that you have, but I really don't like... it. Like finding out the background of it, like, I really don't need that. It's going to piss me off. (laughs) Like, I don't need that. And it's going to piss me off. And knowing that it's true... Yeah, how, that's the killer part. About it. It's very that true. they got with it. They they're saying like the like the scenes are almost photographically the same as. I think that, that there's an energy in that, and I don't think I need really need that energy mm-hmm. right now in me. Just just. Who's <laughs> I, 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 I you trying to get it canceled? I'm like, shit. Should I watch before it get canceled? I Do mean, I really need to watch this? But, but like, there's tons of docs out already. It's but, just that they've dramatized this to make him look a little bit more humanized. They trying to like. Trying to explain the monster side. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They're trying to tell a story about him, and it's not. The, the, there's no story to tell. He was just a monster mm-hmm. that preyed on the crack area, black people in the hood. Like, there's nothing cute about it, but they're making it cute. They're like the the, the memes of of the uh, Jeffrey Dahmer. Oh, you thought I was feeling you? Well, nigga, you lunch like that. It, the culture is pushing. It to be the like the, the, like the number one stream thing because you water everything down that's because we because we're, we're desensitized. Yeah, like yeah, that's crack era. I don't even know where it's at, but that city. But we, but we we don't see it as that could be our city. We can know that because there was a fucking serial killer down down in w- the west side mm-hmm. doing whatever you do, kidnapping people and shit like that. Like there's a that was in my neighborhood, Anthony Sowell. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, when we think about, like, I don't want to see the fucking Netflix series about that shit. I mean, you must have kind of saw that thought bubble over my head, because yeah. as you was kind of talking about that, that was my first, like, thought, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, just kind of living so close to that space. I remember getting off from the library and, uh, no, getting off from the shoe store. I was still working in the shoe store. Mm-hmm. I was leaving the shoe store. I'd leave, leave the library and then go to the shoe store, do sales report. And leave. We were going to uh, Imperial every day that week, and there was a different group of folks, and it was like 50, 60 people. Every single night that I got off from work, Mm. I'd be there. And this is summer, so it's like 8.30 at night, and it's still, you know, sun setting. Mm -hmm. It's still 25 people out there just talking. People drove from Bedford here, there. I mean, over the course of that week, Mm -hmm. I met so many different people there. And it was just such an outpouring of just emotion. And uh, even like the long-term ripple effects of it, I remember there was this lady that people, that she used to like walk up and down the street on Buckeye. And, um, you know, people would just kind of like 
you know, not paying no attention or saying nasty things about her. Like her downward spiral was her niece being mm-hmm. in, you know, one of the victims there, right? Mm-hmm. And so now she's just kind of roaming the streets and this and that. But if you don't know that back half of her, you just kind of look a drug addict. She's just a drug addict, right just a drug addict or something uh, like that. Yeah. insane, whatever you want to call it. Even thinking about it. So to even just think about like again a series that would just kind of dehumanize like that entire like ripple effect. Um, just so you can I didn't even think it about it like that. That's yeah. all he was like, yeah. Yeah. they do it so you can show it on the screen. But it's happening in different in different ways too. I even think like, and this is like not to uh, like trivialize the, mm-hmm. the depth of the of the Dahmer series, but I think like even that Tyson series, right, the one mm-hmm. that was on Hulu, like yeah. he had nothing to do with it, yeah. and he was like the that dude part, ran yeah. off of this story and the whole nine. It's and like because they can put that little part in the beginning. This is based off yeah true stories, but it's not the true exact things, and it, it covers yeah. them legally, so they can take your the whole life story. They can take your whole life story. <laughs> and add whatever they want to it and say, this is Jamal's life story. <laughs> based off of these events. Yeah, but based off of these events and some dra- some, some dramatization of Yo, it. Yo, who's playing you if, 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 if in your life story? Who's playing you? I mean, gotta who, be an unknown. She's gonna be younger than me, I guess. So. Gotta be an unknown. I don't think there's nobody currently nobody that I wanna play. play. me but me, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So yeah, that... Because this is a great part you brought up. No, I need dark skin, brother. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you done with your uh your reading watching um, the same time? Yeah, because okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know about that. Oh no, shit. and I also uh I was doing Ander too. Um okay. uh I just went on like a nice little binge for episodes of, of, what? of Andrew the Star Wars shit. Oh, oh, um um it's called Andor. 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 Yeah. Andor. Andor. I don't know that. And and was it good? It's uh, pretty it's it's good, but because I don't have all of it, it's not really explaining what his actual part is. Because yeah. it's supposed to be based off of Rogue, some attached to Rogue One. Yeah. Bottom line, when they got the the map for the Death Star shit. So I don't know what he really accomplished during this time frame, but you're supposed to be finding out. So. Okay. I'm not a, I'm not big on Star Wars. So I'm not hey, but it took me, it took me what? With the pandemic, basically, for real. Yep, up yeah. until the for me to understand yeah, the what pandemic. was going yeah, on. Yeah, you still came in and told <laughs> you us to was understand. Like, I'm running through the Star Wars, man. I ain't shit else to do. <laughs> yeah, bro. And I did. I couldn't. I'm like, man, for years, I would ask my brother too. I was like, bro, can you explain this shit? Because yeah. I just don't get it. Yeah. yeah, like it's just it's so much. And I was like, I, yeah. I don't understand. Prequels and shit, all that. Yeah, yeah, that's wild. Julian, yes, sir. What are you reading, watching, or listening to, sir? Uh. Man, I'll be honest, I really don't have too much free time during the day. But mm-hmm. what I have been going back to reading wise is a uh kind of like a work manual. Um, but it's uh it's called When People Care Enough to Act. And okay. it's a uh it's about asset based community development. So just kind of picking up on uh on um you know, with some years under my belt with the like doing the actual work, it was just kinda interesting to go back to some of the language and and, and just kind of pick up on different parts of it and just kind of fill in what I've uh, um, kind of learned the hard way and, you know, this yeah. and that. And, you know, again, it was, to me, it was just kind of checks and balances, seeing where I was at, um, put myself on the scale, so to speak. Uh, so I've been going back to that a lot. Um, I always, I mean, it's a lot of stuff I always go back and forth to. Um, but that right now has been one of the, one of the um, books that I've been picking up a lot uh, lately. Um, listening to, I mean, it's New Music Friday, so I'm always listening. I'm always searching. Okay. You know, I'm always put, looking for something, but um, there's never seems to, never seems to be any much of anything. Yeah. You know, so it is what it is. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I'm a, uh, you know, sometimes I get in my grooves. I'm a SoundCloud digger okay. at times. You know, so I always kind of like trying to find still the pockets and stuff. Yeah. I, you know, you are still you uh, yeah. you dig for music then. If you, yeah. That's, yeah. I, that's where it's at. I'm still, I'm still I mean, because look, yeah. we're sound SoundCloud like enthusiasts. That's where we got our start at. Was, yeah. was the SoundCloud yeah. way? Yeah. When, I like when to call us legend and shit. Yeah, I feel like yeah. We're yeah. The first. Oh yeah, couple we people were on the platform that made a couple thousand. What four? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're on a few, yeah, we got, yeah. we got, we got, we got them, and that search of just finding like, oh, this is new, and he only got a hundred followers, and he, yeah. he got all this music. All right, yeah. this is, a, I'm a fan, and like, I hope you keep making it. Like, I love that. Era. That was a great era. That was a super good era. I mean, it's still, I mean, you know, yeah. 
most of the time when you're kind of in community or whatnot, I mean, it's another thing that COVID kind of disrupted, but there would always be like these little beat sessions and, you know, the uh, local producers, I don't want to say local, because yeah. they're not limited to where they, you yeah. know, to of there. Of course, but, the you producer know. wise, definitely not. Yeah, yeah. but everyone so. that lives, approximately. Yeah, <laughs> you can go hang out. <laughs> you know, chat. you yeah. hang out and play vibes and stuff like that. And I mean, that that to me, like, that was just such a, a um, now, like, having, not, not necessarily having it in the last two years, like, I romanticize with the moments, right? Like, man, I miss... Just kind of being in community and just hearing some new dope shit. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like I miss that, but mm-hmm. that's why we do this. We yeah. get to we get to talk to these mm-hmm. these artists and like, get that unreleased music stuff they working on. Like, hey, put this out now. Bro. It's always sound like I remember like yeah. when the first time I heard like what like Boss Bird E and T and like mm-hmm. uh, was this. Uh, was I want to call them certified G's, but they wouldn't call that at that time. World camp and all. Uh, that? World camp and all yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, like when they first came, like that was like a bubble, like like hearing music at that, that time was frame. Like, too. That was like you yeah. playing that on the page. You had a you had a search for your city <laughs> to find their music. Mm-hmm. Like That's River funny. Skittles. Oh, like man. you had a search wow. for your music. What in, happened in to Cleveland? Skittles? What, what, what? She moved to Atlanta. This mother shit. Is her That's name still Skittles? Did it change? Oh, she probably had to change it. I'm, I'm pretty sure she probably had to change it. Is she still Skittles? Is she still Skittles? She probably spell it different. I just know she moved Skittles. to Atlanta. Mm-hmm. This mother she was stuff. doing. Uh, she was doing T-shirts. She was doing the Cupcake Mafia or Cupcake whatever yeah, it was. She was doing the Cupcake okay. Mafia yeah. stuff. Yeah. That stuff was all uh-huh. over. But stuff like that, like you know, like no, that's you just brought me back in the day when it just bubbled and you just you find out about a Cleveland artist, you like, oh yeah, I'm on it. Let's do it. Bruh. Same thing like uh, now. It's yeah. like without this, I wouldn't even know. Look, Corey Bates, mm-hmm. fucking Corey Bates is that. That was just that Corey wave Bates. was Shout just yeah. That, that was a crunk era to me. That was that, that was my crunk. Yo, that era. was a good moment yeah, though, man. See, I mean, it felt like we were kind of creating our own little thing. Yeah. And I feel like we created cat rap. Oh, personally, that's, yeah. that's why I feel like yeah. Cleveland created created that shit. That's why I feel like. I mean, yeah. if, if we. It, if there was a, we might have to do it. If there was a documentary on cap rap and its connection to Texas and the swang dolls and yeah. the pop and truck candy paint era, I'm not saying mixture, but just down south shit and some and some, down, and some down, east coast. Everybody got yeah, it. everybody it's, got Ken fucking down south and, and they brought it directly. We, we, we still do a car a car show on Sundays here and there. Well, I you know, it, Cleveland man, we we are just such a broad cross section of people. I mm-hmm. mean, all our folks are from. You know, somewhere. South, deep south. You know what I'm saying? Deep and south. the flip side is, is that most our biggest export is people. Mm. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? Oh, so yeah. Oh, we yeah. We are everywhere but Cleveland. If you, you travel anywhere saying? outside of Cleveland, you got on a Cleveland hat, Indian oh, hat, man, whatever it gonna, is. Yeah. Hey, bro, where, where, where you from? Bro? You in Sweet Family because you, you, know, you know the block, hey, you know the street. You been bro, out I'm here? about to like, turn my meter off for you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, man, that's love, bro. Yeah, that's real. It's a, you instantly become. Because you don't know how much it is to get out of there. Yeah. So to see somebody out here striving and doing the thing, that's why I would say when you like when you meet somebody out in Cali, yeah. that's from Cleveland, it's, it's a different energy from them. Like, hey man, I, I want to th- show you this, I want to show you that. Like, I, I think that there's such like a monolithic experience though being from Cleveland though as well, mm-hmm. right? Like you kind of naturally got a little bit of a chip on your shoulder, mm-hmm. so it's kind of like you got a little bit of that. You got like, it. You yeah. said you, you can sense you can sense the, the, yeah. the danger in the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, it's a mall. It's something going on. Like, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, you feel yeah, that over yeah. there? Like, I feel it. There's something, yeah. something going on yeah. in here. Like, yeah. it's, a, it's it's definitely a Cleveland thing. The 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 I don't say the blue collarness, but the but the work ethic, like like you know, if you gotta, if, if, again, if you got out, hustle. you yeah. had to hustle to get out of yeah. it. Like yeah. you, you didn't get handed a silver spoon, and we could have, but you you still had to hustle to get. Well, this it. is where the hustles are perfected, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, oversaturated markets, yes. you know what I'm saying, in tight spaces. So I mean, that's what Cleveland is, right? It's I a like lot that. of people doing a lot of the same stuff. I mean, and we're, the ones that shine shine through hard. Oh and, yeah, absolutely. And if you mm-hmm. can't shine through this, what's your first? What's your next thing, man? I'm about to leave, bro. I'm going to so and so. I'm about to bubble out there. And nine times out of ten, you t- that hustle to transfer somewhere else, and it's what it, it takes. Yeah. So you know. This is where stars are, are are refined and made, you know. Are are you done with your reading, watching, listening? So I got to get transition for that. Yeah. So there's an HBO show called The Hype. The Hype is a fashion show. Uh, shout also. out to Sierra Boyd from she on there? from Fris Me Good. She made it on there, bruh. For the new season. For the new season, season hey. two. God, on, I'm not gonna say what what, what what happens. She kills it. They love her. Gets a deal with Marnie. 
on, on some like some winning shit. I don't know if you know who Marnie is. She does the uh, yeah. the, yeah, the, the furry joints, yeah. all the furry shit. So I, I guess they have a uh, you can say it on her gram now. She has a uh, she designs for quite a Beyonce line, mm. and they're gonna do a collaborative thing with the Beyonce line and Marnie and Frisk Me Good. That's fire! And shout out to you, Sierra. Because that's shout that's out to you, dope. yeah. And I'm not gonna say how to how what the show did, but yeah, fuck that. Wasn't your fault. Was not your fault. <laughs> I gotta watch it now. It's, it's good as fuck. I, I waited. It's a good ass show. Yeah, because I watched the first season, but I ain't watched the second season. And yet. there's a dude from Columbus that do yeah. the, the Ohio. Um, oh, the Midwest kid. No, uh, um, Ohio is hustler. No, Ohio is only for hustlers or something. Uh, only for hustlers. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, he's on there. Yeah, killing it, doing his thing. Yeah, keeping it super Ohio and shit like that. Nigo or something like yes, that. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. NGO. Yeah. NGO. Yep, yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. yep. So he's yeah. on there. So we're very much so represented. represented yeah, great. You don't really see us in a lot of shows and, on TV. But when you yeah. shine through, yeah. Sierra been shining through so hard, yeah, bro. Yeah, because she was doing the shit with the shoes. She, she would remake the shoes ex- ex- into like so dresses she, and shit like so, that. So a, a thing with her on the show, and, and they say it as soon as she really got on there. She likes to upcycle. So upcycling, she, she reuses a lot of stuff to make the, the new stuff. Mm-hmm. She ain't bringing none of her stuff with her. It was all new fabrics and all that. She didn't really get to do her thing. And then it turns out how it turns out. But great show. Go watch it. Um, I got him back into anime. Jutsu Tension. Is the Jutsu Tension? Yeah, buddy. Yeah, that shit was hard. Um... You came at a good time because it's coming back in like what January or next month. Okay, bet, bet, bet. I, I watched the movie recently too. I watched the. Uh, what you watch it on? Crush Raw. I start paying for it. Oh, uh, you got to pay for it. Yeah. Sons yeah, you got, got, got to start paying for it. Yeah. Um, I'm listening to. That, let me get that log in there, bro. How many <laughs> subscriptions? Oh, yeah. Man, it's a lot. I got a lot of subscriptions. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go buy cable for real. I ain't going to lie to you. Yeah, cable oh, ain't no, enough. You still don't know. <laughs> it's still not the same. Cable ain't yeah. enough. They don't give you the power, bro. That's yeah. it. They just don't give you the power. Um, I'm listening to that new Tory. Um, I ran through it one listen on some pass by. It's pretty much smooth. It's 20, it's 20 songs. 20 songs. Um, No skips. If you it, it like like on some annoying shit, we kind of all blends together. He give you a lot of different vibes on there. He rapping, he singing. It, it's a good album. It's a really good album. I still look like Alone at the Prime more than anything. I think that's probably like the top 10 albums of like the last few years for real. It, it's mm-hmm. just it just hit different. Um, Yeah, man. That's it for me. It's a good, good show. I'm glad you came by, man. Julian, thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. Now that, that you've been here, you can come back and be a third mic and, and have you know, people talk, talk some stuff. Anything you got to talk Yo, to? Yo, any conversation? You know, I love uh, just kind of uh, jumping in here and there. It's like a double Dutch game. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Y'all keep the convo flowing. I just kind of jump in. Yeah, here just and shoot some shots. Spot, that's so. it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we very much so appreciate you. Um, nice word, sir. Anything to shout out? Anything you got coming up? Any. Club. Yeah, I mean, there's always stuff going on. Um, we got the uh, the food truck. Food truck is uh, on Instagram. Famous Angus food truck. Hell yeah. Uh, Where you park at? Uh, in my driveway. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I mean, I, I work a job. I you oh, know, okay. I got another small business. My other business is printing. So I, I run a uh, t-shirt company, uh, printing company called Cleveland Over Everything. Mm-hmm. And so uh, we've been doing that for some time. And um, that's really like my day-to-day. So I do everything from uh, business cards to uh, vinyl graphics and backdrops and uh, window decals and floor decals. And you think it, we ink it. You know what I'm saying? So we're doing a whole lot of stuff. Plus uh, embroidery. Um, it's a, just a multitude of, of, of uh, practices. So there's that, including over everything. A um, bunch of community stuff. Uh, Neighborhood Connections is uh, where I work. And, uh, you know, if you really want to get involved with some neighborhood stuff, go to those neighbor nights. Um, go to neighbor, uh, neighborhoodgrants.org and, uh, you know, catch up on those community calendars, jump into some stuff. Uh, find that fit, you know what I'm Dope. saying? You know, all uh, 
all uh, uh, everyone's uh, needed. You know, everybody's uh, perspective is valuable. So, you know, the table is big enough. You know, yes, everybody sir. can eat. You know, so for sure, come down with us. Thank you, thank you. Right. That is super dope. And I didn't know. I, 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 well, I did know. I forgot about the claiming over everything business. I forgot that. You, you so many hats, bro. You got so many hats. It's dope. So many. All right, people. That is another show. As that, I think we got out of here on time for you, man. I appreciate you, as that King Mona. I appreciate you, Julian. I appreciate Peanut Gallery. Hey, Peanut Gallery, hey, over there. Yeah, yeah. I am Juice Shred. This is Color Radio. Hey. Play that funky music. Hey.